Hello guys, welcome back to Jenna's Reading Corner. Today we will be reading a wonderful true story book and I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And today we'll, what we'll be reading is a wonderful book. An Invisible Thread, Christmas Story, a true story based on the number one New York Times bestseller by Laura Schroff and Alex Transowski, illustrated by Barry Reed. My name is Maurice, and I have a friend named Laura. Some people don't understand how we can be friends because we're so different, but we're great friends. So this is Maurice, sweet little boy. And now, let's get reading him. I met Laura one day when I was very hungry. We didn't have any food at home, and I hadn't eaten anything in two days. So I was standing on the street and hoping someone would help me a lot of people walked right past me and acted like I was invisible. Then Laura walked by. Excuse me, lady. Do you have any spare change? I asked her. I am hungry. At first, Laura said no. Then she looked at me funny. Then she said, if you're hungry, can I take you to get something to eat? I wasn't sure if I should say yes. But then my stomach growled and said, we're hungry down here. You'd better say yes. So I told Laura I would go to lunch with her. I had a cheeseburger and fries and a chocolate milkshake. My stomach and I were both so happy. Laura could tell I needed a friend and was hungry a lot. So she took me to dinner the next week, and the week after that, and the week after that too. We had dinner together every Monday night. That's how we became friends. And that's Laura Schroff, right there. And that's Maurice. At one of our dinners, when it was getting colder outside, Laura asked me what my plans were for Christmas. Nothing, I said. Nothing, she asked. Do you celebrate Christmas? I know about it, I said, but we don't have money for toys and things like that. Excuse me. We've never celebrated Christmas. Laura was surprised. I told Laura about my family. I had two sisters, a mother and a grandma, but we didn't have a home. We lived in a small room in a place called a shelter hotel. My mother was sick a lot. We, have you ever received a Christmas gift? Laura asked. Only once, I said. Last Christmas, I went to a holiday party at the Salvation Army, a place that helps feed people. All the kids were there could pick out a present of their very own. A man pointed to a big box of toys and told me I could choose one. I picked out a white teddy bear with a little red heart. It was soft. And sometimes at night when I held it, it made me feel safe. That's the only Christmas gift I ever got, I said. Laura seemed sad, but then she looked like she had an idea. Maurice, would you like to spend Christmas with me and my family? She asked. I'd seen what TV was like for... I've, I'd seen what Christmas was like for a lot of people on TV. It looks like so much fun. So of course I said, you bet I would. I could hardly wait. The next week, I went with Laura to pick out a Christmas tree for the first time. It was so big, we almost couldn't carry it back to her apartment. And we had to stop a few times, but we made it. So they're picking out the tree and that's them eating their, having their lunches. We decorated the tree in Laura's apartment. Laura showed me how to hang the ornaments, the tinsel, and the lights, too. Then we made cookies and had hot chocolate. Baking cookies was one of my favorite things we did on Monday nights. They were always delicious and made the apartment smell so good. Then we just sat and looked at the tree and all lit up and listened to Christmas carols. It was just like I had seen on TV. Maurice, I want you to make a Christmas list so I could give it to Santa. Laura said as we finished eating the cookies. You mean I just write it down and Santa brings it? I asked. That couldn't be true. Well, not everything, said Laura, laughing. But he tries his best. I couldn't believe it. But I wrote my list and put, it on, put on it a lot of things that I needed, like a new jacket, a scarf, and warm gloves. Then at the very top, I wrote that I wanted most of all, a remote control race car. I hope Laura was right about Santa trying to bring a lot of things on the list, 
Still, I wasn't sure how Santa could find me. There's Maurice eating his cookie and writing his list. And there's them decorating the tree. On Christmas Eve, Lori invited me to her apartment again. Her sister Nancy was there too. This time, there were a whole bunch of colorful boxes under the tree with bows on them. It was amazing. It felt like this red one. It looks like this one, red one is for you, said Laura, and you could open it tonight. It's for me. I picked up the box, but I wasn't sure what to do with it. I looked at Laura, who told me to take off the paper to see what was inside. I had never had a wrap present before. I tore off the wrapping paper, and it was exactly what I wanted, had wanted, a remote control race car. That night we had dinner and milk and cookies, and I got to play with my new car and dunk my cookies in my milk. It was the best Christmas Eve I had ever had. On Christmas Day, I went with Laura and Nancy to her, their sister's family's house outside the city. I had been there before, but it still, but still, I still couldn't believe how big it was. The yard looked like a whole park to me, covered with snow. I got to see Laura's father, Nunzi, and her brothers, Frank and Stephen, and her sister, Annette, and Annette's husband, Bruce, and their kids, Colette, Derek, and Brooke. Derek was about my age. I brought my new race car with me so Derek and I could play. And then I saw their Christmas tree. It was even bigger than Laura's tree, and underneath there were a million colorful boxes, all wrapped up. I thought this has to be the luckiest family in the world. So that's him at their house, and he's opening the remote control race car with the paper, and that's her sitting down, and then that's them going to uh, Miss Laura's family's house. We all sat down for Christmas dinner. Annette said grace. Dear God, she said, we thank you for all the wonderful blessings you have given us. And we thank you for letting us spend this Christmas with our new friend, Maurice. Then we had dinner. We had a big roast and a ham and mashed potatoes and green beans and corn and warm rolls. And that wasn't even everything. I had never seen so much food in my life. But the food wasn't even the best part. The best part was how everyone sat around the big dining room table and talked and laughed and had so much fun. Just fun just being together. It felt nice and warm, and everyone was happy. I had never seen that many happy people together before. I hope someday I could have a family like that, too. And that's them sitting around the table. After dinner, we all sat around the Christmas tree, so everyone could open their presents. Colette got a jewelry box, Derek got a basketball, Brooke got a beautiful doll. They got a lot of other presents and it was fun to watch. Dan, then Annette said, Maurice, what are you waiting for? You have Christmas presents too. I couldn't believe it. Santa knew where to deliver my presents. I found a red box with my name on it, then a green box, then a silver and gold box, all for me to open. I got a winter jacket and a pair of sneakers, a warm scarf, gloves, and even my very own basketball, just like Derek. There was so much wrapping paper on the floor from all of the presents that I almost couldn't even see my legs and my feet. And see their Christmas tree? It looks just like mine. This mine's white. <laughs> Later that night, we said goodbye, and Laura drove me home. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep because my stomach was full, and my brain was full, and my heart was full, too. There's Maurice in the back, right there. When we got back to Laura's apartment, I asked her if I could leave my presents there. I was a little worried that if I took them back to the shelter hotel, they might get lost or worse. Of course, said Laura, they will be here so you can play with them any time you visit. I carefully left my ro ro remote control car in a basketball. And basketball, I took my jacket, scarf, sneakers, and gloves. But I also left something else. Laura walked me home. 
Thank you for giving me my first ever real Christmas, I said. It was very special to me. No, Maury, said Laura. Thank you for making my Christmas so special by spending it with me. Then she gave me a great big hug. I waved goodbye, and as I walked up the steps and Laura waited for me to go inside, I was carrying a bag of food for my mother, sisters, and grandma so they could have a taste of Christmas, too. I wanted to share whatever I had with them. Now that's spreading the true Christmas spirit. When Laura got back to her apartment, she noticed I had left something under the, her Christmas tree. I thought we opened all the presents, she said out loud, puzzled. But there was one more, just for her. It wasn't in a box, and it just wasn't wrapped. It was just tucked under the, her, the tree, but it was a, still a Christmas present. It was the only thing I had to give her, my white teddy bear with the little red heart. Merry Christmas, I wrote to Laura on a piece of paper. Thank you for being my friend. So one small act of kindness can change a person's life. That night I went to sleep all tingly and feeling good. I felt happy and full. I thought about my wonderful Christmas and what I loved the most. I didn't love my presents the most, although I loved them very much. I didn't love the food the most, although I loved that too. What I loved the most was my new friends sitting around the big dining room table, laughing and joking and having fun just being together. I thought about how uh, when I got older, I wanted to have a family too and sit around the big dining room table with all of my kids and laugh and talk and have a lot of special Christmases together. Just before I drifted off to sleep, I looked outside and saw a silver moon in the sky. It seemed like it was making the whole city glow and twinkle, just like I felt. And I thought this was the best Christmas ever. Laura sat in front of her Christmas tree, holding her new white teddy bear. Then she looked out her window and saw the same glowing, sparkly moon in the sky. She felt the warm glow, too, and she thought this was the best Christmas ever. So there's also a note from Miss Laura and also from Maurice. Um, and there's small acts of kindness in the back, and I'm going to show you guys real quick. And there's also some pictures in here of them when they got older. So I'll show you real quickly. This is Miss Laura's note that you can read. And you could always pause my video and you could read it if you'd like. And then this is also Maurice's note, the little boy. And then there's also... In the back, small acts of kindness of what you could do in your life. So right here. And then right here, some too. And then there, I wanted to also show you guys what's also in the book is um, one small act of kindness. Donate a meal. Tell someone how special they are. Share love. Help a neighbor pack lunch for someone in need. Invite a new friend to come over. Volunteer and give. Can change a life forever. So this is Miss Laura and Maurice in real life. And that's um, actually, our, this is Laura and Maurice. And I do, think they, I do think they actually do still do their lunches together. And this is him with his family. Mr. Maurice. So that was an amazing Christmas book. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.